Hi everyone. Uh, so today I want to talk about something that feels very relevant. I'm just going to share this to our group um, that seems or tends to be very relevant at this time of the year. And that is the January blahs or seasonal affective disorder. Um, if you are in the northern climate or an area where there's less sunlight during these months, this is um, definitely usually relevant and I think everyone is affected to some degree or another. However, some people obviously can become extremely depressed during winter where it can become quite serious. Um, and I wanted to address this because part of building better brains um, and you know helping to build a better brain for our children is not just starting with our children. It starts with us as well. And I know that uh, winter is hard and I think that winter is harder this year than you know, it has been for a lot of people for many, many years. Um, you know, a lot of us are dealing with lockdowns and isolation and social distancing and just stress over what's going on in the world, whether it's the economy and COVID and, um, you know, political turmoil. And so really protecting ourselves and helping to build that resilience during particularly the winter months, but obviously throughout the rest of the year as well, is more important than ever. And that's important because in order for our children to be healthy, we need to be healthy. In order for our children to be physically, mentally, emotionally, um, you know, to, to thrive and to also be resilient, we need to have that as well. Because one thing that I learned when my daughter was ill is that your child can only be as healthy as you are. And for the most part, that's generally true. So the other reason I feel like this is really important to talk about is that kids do get seasonal affective disorder too. Though they are not probably gonna notice it, so they're not gonna be as aware of it. Um, and it might not present as depression and anxiety in the way we see it in adults, right? We know that when children have depression and anxiety, uh, it really tends to pre can present differently. So it could present as um, definitely higher anxiety. It can present as hyperactivity. Maybe they're not as motivated. Maybe they're more moody. They have a harder time sleeping. Um, any of their typical behaviors might be just exasperated. So look for that um, and be aware that this could possibly be a factor. So you don't need to start digging and trying to figure out if this is your child and if they have seasonal affective disorder, unless you think it's really serious. What I'm gonna talk about today is three things you can do to help build up your resilience to that for both you and your child. And then um, later on this week, I'll be talking about three more things you can do as well. So what we really wanna do is we want to equip ourselves. And uh, I just wanna mention, nourishment goes so much deeper than just the food we eat, but just keep in mind that the better we nourish ourselves, the more our nervous system is going to be more resilient to stress and to kind of, you know, changes in weather, less sun, all of that type of stuff. And if it seems like for you that doesn't play a role and it's totally the lack of sunlight and I hate winter, I totally get it. I've been there. I used to actually really struggle with SAD. And um, one thing that really can be an eye opener is to recognize that in Northern Europe, I believe it's Sweden, I could be wrong, but I believe it's Sweden, um, where they have the practice of Hague and other North European countries do this as well. Um, one of those countries actually has one of the lowest rates of seasonal affective disorder um, and depression in general, and they have one of the longest winters. So how can that be? So I'm gonna be talking about some of the practices that they've adopted um, and that other Northern climates do as well to prevent, to help mitigate the, those effects of winter. And even to, into next week, I'll be talking about it as well. So um, the important thing is to work on the outer and work on the inner, okay? So without much ado, I'm gonna go into tip number one, and that is sun and light therapy. So while the sun might not be as bright in the winter months, we still get the benefits from the sun. And I'm not just talking vitamin D, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, I've learned quite a bit from, uh, if, you ha if you're not following Dr. Catherine Clinton, a uh, naturopathic doctor, do so. I've learned so much from her. But um, light photons, and we get so, and there's so many other things that the sun gives us um, that helps to kind of charge us and make us feel 
really good and, and really positive and helps to increase our serotonin levels and so forth. So yes, it should come as no surprise that depression and suicide is lowest in the sunshine belt, but the solution doesn't have to be to pack up and move south. <laughs> so uh, getting outside, uh, one thing that I learned from Dr. Katherine Clinton is that snow reflects um, the sunlight, right? So it's, we're actually so blessed that snow is white and when everything's covered in white, I always find, I live in Canada, I'm always so glad that it's super, um, when there was this beautiful blanket of snow everywhere and it is just so much brighter outside than when it's just like dead grass and there's that weird in between phase in the fall and the spring. Um, and so snow, bodies of water, even white paint in, in your rooms, in, in, how, in your house, um, helps to reflect that light and will boost mood and increase serotonin levels among other things. So um, getting outside, even if it's cloudy, you will notice when you're looking out your window, it looks really dreary. When you get dressed up and get outside, um, and particularly out in nature, it, it just instantly shifts things and it doesn't seem so dreary. But when you're looking at it from the window, don't wait for the, uh, from the view from your window to be what inspires you to get outside because you'll probably be waiting forever. Um, so the other thing though is light therapy. If you are someone who really struggles with this and you already have a lot of issues with depression and so forth, getting a light box can be immensely beneficial. It triggers nerve cells. The, the bright lights is not the same as like a bright light in your house. It's like 10 times brighter. Um, and it triggers um, the nerve signals in the brain as light passes through the eye. And what happens is this causes the brain to release hormones and chemicals that help to produce um, you know, a positive mood that are responsible for a positive mood. So number two, second thing is vitamin D. We hear a lot about it, cannot stress it enough. It is so important for not only immunity and so many other functions in the body. It is not really a vitamin. It's actually like more, it is actually a hormone um, and it gets activated by exposure to sunlight. However, I highly recommend supplementing with it. So something our grandparents did, right, that we don't do anymore is cod liver oil. And there was a lot of wisdom behind that. It's like a spoonful of immunity in cod liver oil. We have our omega-3s, we get our vitamin A, and we get our vitamin D. So you don't have to do cod liver oil if that's not your thing, um, but just keep in mind that our bodies cannot synthesize sufficient vitamin D due to the lower levels of light in the winter time. And so get outside as much as possible because part of the problem is that we are not getting outside enough. We spend most of our lives indoors today, whereas our ancestors spent at least half of their day outdoors. So that makes a huge difference. Um, and so what happened, just to kind of go back a bit, is that in the winter time, that lack of sunlight prevents the hypothalamus, which is in the brain, from working properly. And this results in a disruption in the circadian rhythm. And what that results in is possibly higher level levels of melatonin. You're gonna have probably lower levels of serotonin because of the reduced light exposure, because you're being less active and all kinds of other things. And if you combine that with other factors like deficiencies and you're just not in, you have a joie de vivre, you're just not getting out and enjoying and you've kind of been prepped for, oh, here comes winter, then that can really set you up for depression. And that excess melatonin can really start to make you feel lethargic and so forth. And that can, that's where you kind of get set up for a possible situation with seasonal affective disorder. And then vitamin D also helps to balance that melatonin and serotonin. So one more reason why you really want to make sure that you are getting enough vitamin D in your diet. You can get it checked. Do keep in mind that if you go to your uh, medical doctor, they might tell you everything's fine because technically on paper it is in that you're not in a severe deficiency where it's causing an illness, right? That's unfortunately the the, the kind of red flag for most, um, for, for what, what they're kind of trained to look for. Uh, so when I went to a functional medicine doctor as well as a naturopath, they were like, your vitamin D is way too low, like very, very low. And um, I had to increase quite a bit and so forth. So one more thing I want to talk about is the prefrontal cortex right up here where our kids executive functioning happenings all happens, all that reasoning, planning, thinking, all of that type of stuff um, that is basically responsible for those higher order processes 
serotonin is crucial for that prefrontal cortex and all of that executive functioning to be happening optimally. So as we know, serotonin is produced by that's where kind of the link between seasonal affective disorder can come in with our children and, um, you know, basically poor learning, poor, you know, maybe their reading's not as good or low mood or hyperactivity that they're just off because their serotonin is off. So that's why we want to make sure that they are getting outside exposure to light enough, that they are getting enough vitamin D all of that type of stuff. And um, one more interesting thing, there was a study done, I believe it was Trudy Scott, that I, uh, who's a kind of internationally known nutritionist, who talks about how war vets with PTSD, um, compared to vets without PTSD, had significantly lower levels of vitamin D. So this is what I mean by nutrition, rest, exercise, all of that stuff can help to build a nervous system that is a lot more resilient to stress. Obviously, if we're living through a war or we're living through some traumatic experience, we're going to feel it. But if we really pad our nervous system with really good, healthy choices and so forth, then that is going to help us be more resilient and not suffer, hopefully, uh, as serious effects. So definitely look into vitamin D for your child. I definitely recommend if you're not living in like the sunshine belt to be taking vitamin D on a daily basis, even during the summer months. Um, Omega-3s is the last thing I'm gonna talk about today. So you need omega-3s for your brain to function properly. Bottom line, um, you need it for whether your child needs it, if they, especially if they have dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyspraxia, but uh, those healthy fats help to maintain adequate levels of those, you know, feel good chemicals like dopamine and serotonin and so forth. And all of those healthy fats have been shown in countless studies to help increase or improve mood, to increase feelings of happiness, reduce symptoms of depression, anxiety, and, and so forth. And the other thing with omega-3s is that it is one of the uh, most powerful anti-inflammatories uh, and depression can is now being very much linked to brain inflammation so that is why once again we want to bring that inflammation down in the brain um, so that we can improve mood and so forth and just to mention before I sign off for the day is that um, also like my daughter who had pandas incredible brain inflammation children with autism are found to have you know intense brain inflammation and the list goes on and on so whether it's a learning disability behavior depression anxiety whatever the case may be really bringing down that brain inflammation is so important and the first place you can start is definitely with uh your omega-3 so think walnuts walnut oil oily fish all that type of stuff and then i do recommend supplementing if there is some kind of disorder or um, you know, brain imbalance, if you will, because the supplement can make all of the difference in the world. So uh, t tomorrow, I uh, guess, tomorrow uh, I will talk about three more things you can do to help beat the winter blues. Um, and just remember guys, it's all about padding your nervous system and kind of building up that resilience. Life is not easy, it is not perfect, but we can do things to help us be able to manage the effects of uh, what's going on in our lives and in the world and with our children. So let me know in the comments below, do you have seasonal affective disorder? Have you noticed if your child um, might have some different behaviors during the winter months and do you think it could be linked to some of these factors that perhaps you've never considered before? So thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.